Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us here on Up With Cram. I'm Channing Curtis. Glad to have you here with us. I'm Tim Pham, and happy Friday Eve. That's right. Oh, I love it. Friday yes. Junior, whatever you like <laughs> to call it. We are one day closer to the weekend. Right. And wow, talk about a warm start to the, the month of December. Some parts of central Washington even saw temperatures in the 70s. 74 degrees in OMAC. That's, oh it's my gosh, spring. that's, that's unbelievable. Summer. It's winter. <laughs> hey, meteorologist Thomas Patrick, though, told us we could break some of those records. So good morning, Thomas. Can we expect more of that warm weather? More warmth, but not more okay. records today. It will not be in the 70s whatsoever this afternoon. I think that was something very incredible. And I think what really stands out, especially in OMAC, not just being 74 degrees, but that it was warmer than the Tri-Cities. It was warmer than Lewiston. Those two spots usually end up standing out as saying, hey, we're the warm spots either across Washington or the Inland Northwest, respectively. But no, 74, far northern Washington right there. That was the warm spot. Probably a bit of a Chinook wind influence there. Makes us uh, at 59 almost seem like it was cool, but it was one degree off of the warmest December day on record yesterday here in Spokane. Uh, 46 as of right now. Still a slight breeze out here this morning, but it's not as warm, but not as windy as it was yesterday morning. By this point, tomorrow morning, it's going to be much colder uh, as today is kind of our final warm day, expecting those low 50s for high temperatures as opposed to upper 50s. And no, no 70s for Central Washington this time around. Around. In fact, uh, here in December, uh, we are now at some of our earliest sunsets of the year. In fact, it's going to be before four o'clock is when that sun is going to set between the 8th and the 13th is when we get our earliest sunsets of the year. So we're kind of right in that really dark stage of the uh, winter months here and the winter temperatures are following for this upcoming weekend back in the 30s by this Sunday and snow chances as early as Saturday morning. We'll detail what those snow chances do entail for us across the Inland Northwest all coming up in a few minutes. A traffic alert for you if you plan to use I-90 between Liberty Lake and Spokane Valley. Plan on additional travel time for the next week. Taking a live look right now, the Washington State Department of Transportation will be reducing traffic to a single lane in both directions today through Friday. Now this is happening between 7 p.m. and 5 a.m. So in the overnight hours, the single lane reductions will also happen on Monday at the same time. This is for construction on the new Kramer Parkway undercrossing and we'll keep you updated on the progress. This morning, two men are recovering after a shooting in Post Falls. The suspect, 31 year old Tyson Sterkel, is now in custody. Both victims are in stable condition. Police say this was a random shooting and they believe Sterkel may have been on drugs. The Post Falls Police Chief says investigators are questioning the suspect to figure out if he had any motive for the shooting. The shooting happened in a shared parking space with a gas station in the Cocapelli coffee stand. Uh, this all happened around 1.30 yesterday afternoon. The, shooter, the shooter, Sterkel, he then drove off and his crime spree continued. He ditched his truck and stole another one near Greens Ferry Road and Hayden Avenue. Sterkel then drove to Highway 53 and McGuire Road where he carjacked another truck. Kootenai County deputies caught him after a short pursuit and he was taken into custody. So now baristas at Cocapelli Coffee Stand witnessed this entire shooting. And so this morning, Crim 2's Nicole Hernandez is there where it looks like a lot of people are still going out and supporting the coffee shop. That's right, Channing. Definitely a good business here coming for the uh, the, per, the per coffee shop here this morning. But the, one of the people that was hurt here actually was in the parking lot here after going through this line and getting their coffee. So I want to give you a look. Uh, the coffee stand actually posted on Facebook here. And they shared what they saw happen uh, that day. So they said that after going through the stand and getting the, their coffee, uh, the man actually parked here. And that is when the gun went off and a bullet went through his windshield and shot him in the neck. So here is a listen from the call after the shooting from authorities. We have two patients, one patient that was shot in the neck. Would you inform Kootenai Health for priority one trauma coming their way? Gunshot wound to the neck. So the man had surgery last night and a second man was injured by shrapnel. Both are expected to be OK. So like I mentioned, Cocapelli Coffee posted to their Facebook page. Their uh, post read in part, quote, it was very scary for everyone and for our girls. We love and appreciate all your support and ask for only positive thoughts and vibes for all involved during this hectic time. 
So this morning, like you can see at the drive through Coca Pelli Coffee is back running, back open. They're planning on going back to business as usual, but like I mentioned, they are just asking people to have kind words and keep them in their minds as they uh, do this after yesterday's incident. Live in Post Falls, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Appreciate the update. This is a developing story. We'll keep you updated right here on Creme 2 and on Creme.com. Now it is just about 8.06. It's time for your morning rush. More news in less time. A Spokane woman was killed during a trip to Cancun over Thanksgiving weekend. According to a Cancun newspaper, 26-year-old Sativa Transu was found dead in her hotel room Saturday night. Her boyfriend was arrested and remains in Mexico on homicide charges. Her family says they've had issues with her boyfriend for more than three years. We want to get Sativa home at this point. Uh, Taylor's lawyers are having her, her body held there. We can't even get her body home to America. And so we want to get her body home. Family set up a GoFundMe page to help her get back to Washington. Today, for the first time, Washington's Missing and Murdered Indigenous People Task Force will meet. State Attorney General Bob Ferguson formed the new task force as more attention is being given to the staggering number of cases in Indigenous communities all over the country. And the task force wants to hear from you, but you do have to sign up in order to leave your comment. So, in order to do that, text the word MISSING to 509-448-2000. We will send you a link right to your phone with all of the information you need to know on how to register. Local nursing schools are feeling the impact of nursing shortages. The Associate Dean of Academic Affairs at WSU's College of Nursing says they are turning away applicants because they simply can't handle any more students. In fact, every year we have a really significant number of very qualified applicants that we cannot admit because we don't have the faculty resources and the clinical placement resources to educate them. She says WSU is exploring things such as simulated clinical opportunities and offering hiring incentives to attract nurses to transition to teaching. Washington's statewide digital vaccine verification tool has officially launched. You can find it at waverify.doh.com. Now, if you're vaccinated against COVID-19, it will ask for some information before sending you a QR code. You'll be able then to use that QR code at restaurants, arenas, and other establishments to prove that you're vaccinated. That's your Morning Rush. We have some new information this morning. Germany Chancellor says people who are not vaccinated will be excluded from non-essential stores and recreational sites. Country leaders are also looking to issue a general vaccine mandate. Right now, about 68% of German residents are fully vaccinated. Meanwhile, the U.S. has its first confirmed case of the Omicron variant in California. So health officials say it was only a matter of time before this happened. With so much still unknown about the new variant, today President Biden will lay out new steps to fight COVID-19 this winter. Now this includes requirements for wearing masks on public transit from January to mid-March. The White House also plans to tighten rules for anyone flying into the country. In the meantime, Washington state health leaders say don't panic as they learn more about this Omicron variant. They say the bigger threat is what's already here. The Department of Health says it won't be a surprise when Omicron shows up in Washington. There are a lot of things that we don't know about this new variant, but what we do know is that vaccines work. We have plenty of reason to be concerned about what is in front of us, which is the Delta variant, and that includes doing all the things that we need to do in order to fight not just the Omicron variant or whatever variant comes our way, but the current Delta variant in our state. During the briefing, health leaders say even if Omicron is detected here, Washington's COVID response will not likely change. The focus will continue to be on self-isolation, identifying close contacts and testing. In Idaho, health leaders say they've seen a decline in hospitalizations and cases. Now, North Idaho is still under crisis standards of care, and as for the Omicron variant, health leaders say that they are prepared. They're researching to try and understand the variant's transmission rates, but Idaho health officials do have a way to tell when it arrives. One of the things that's peculiar about the Omicron vi uh, variant is that it's much like the alpha variant that we saw last spring in that there is a unique PCR profile for certain tests that may give us a sneak peek that it's here. So there's a particular gene target that doesn't amplify. And when we see that 
uh, particular profile, it's an indication that we may have the Omicron variant present. Dr. Christopher Ball from the Idaho Bureau of Laboratories says the Bureau is in communication with Idaho clinical labs to watch for this particular PCR profile. As research continues, health officials say the best way to protect yourself is by getting vaccinated. We know you may have questions about this new variant. That's right. So for the very latest information, all you have to do is text the word COVID to 509-448-2000. We'll send you a link with all of that information right to your phone. A Boise State University professor is facing backlash after controversial statements he made went viral on TikTok. Then later in our next half hour, Jake Dickert will officially be introduced as WSU's new head football coach. And the one thing you need to know about today's weather, very little change to the warm weather pattern that we've been enjoying. In fact, still going to see another day in the 50s, but it might be our last as we are tracking not only colder temperatures, but snow later on in the extended forecast. All right, now that brings us to our question of the morning. How do you feel about December's weather? Do you want it to be cold or do you want it to be warm? Like my friend Tim Pham over here. <laughs> you always drive the conversation on this show, so you can text us your thoughts to 509-448-2000 or you can use the hashtag UpWithCrim on social media. Lots of comments already. My favorite though, some of my coworkers have requested that I do a snow dance. Yeah. <laughs> I need to see what the snow dance looks like. Oh my goodness, yeah, and see, someone said they moved to Spokane from Seattle because of the wonderful season, yeah. so I'm not gonna be a Grinch about it. I do <laughs> like snow. I also just like warm weather. Too. I know, it's not too bad for a couple of days. Just don't stick around for That's too right. long. That's <laughs> right, all right, but first, here's a live look outside as we say good morning to you in Lynn Northwest. Happy Thursday to you. Here's a live look at the skate ribbon where it looks like they're prepping it. Could it be? opening back up. Let us know where you're watching from this morning. We're so glad you're waking up with us.